Salesforce is the world's number one customer relationship management platform and it's used by many Fortune 500 companies. It is used by many top companies like Facebook, Google, Twitter, HCL and has a customer base of over 150,000 companies comprising of large scale, middle scale and small scale enterprises. One of the reasons Salesforce is so popular is because of its security. Salesforce has security built in every layer of the platform. The infrastructure layer comes with a replication, backup, disaster recovery planning, and many more features. But before we get into any more details about Salesforce security, I would like to address the agenda for today's session. So firstly, we'll understand the different levels of security in Salesforce, starting with the organization level security, then object level security, followed by field level security and record level security. Next, we'll take a look at some of the prominent Salesforce security features and then conclude our session by talking about Salesforce security's best practices. Now moving on to the first topic, what is organization level security in Salesforce? So basically there are four levels of security in Salesforce. Organization level security, object level security, field level security and record level security. Let us talk about them one by one. First is the organization level security. So organization level security is the highest level of security in Salesforce. It includes maintaining a list of authorized users, setting password policies and limiting logins to certain hours and locations. So basically the organization level security lets you decide when and from where your users can access the system. It secures the data from any unauthorized users. So some of the important security features in this level of security includes restriction of IP addresses, password policies and login access. So let us understand this one by one. So first is IP restriction. You can allow certain users or your employees to log in from a set of IP addresses. So using trusted IP ranges, you can limit your users ability to log in only when they are in the office. Furthermore, if they attempt to log in from outside the trusted ranges, they might be asked for two factor authentication in which they'll have to enter a code sent to their mobile devices in order to log in. You can set this IP restriction on individual user profiles or even a group of profiles. Next, we have password policies. Here you can specify an amount of time before a user's password expires and the type of password required to log in. Like you can decide the rules to create a password. Like the password should be at least 10 to 12 character long. Like it should contain at least one symbol. It should have both uppercase and lowercase letters and numbers. You can basically set rules to set a password. And having a strong password will make it hard for hackers or unauthorized users to guess the password and log into the account. Next is the login access. Here you can specify the hours from when to when the users can log in depending on the job. So let's say for example, you do not want certain users to log in during the weekend or you want to limit the night shift employees to log in only during their shift. All this can be set in the organization level security. Now let me switch to my Salesforce account so that I can show you what all can be done in the organization level security. So I've logged in into my Salesforce account. So people who are new to Salesforce, this is what the Salesforce homepage would look like. So now let us go to setup. Click on setup. And in the quick find, let us search for users. Select users. Here you can see we have a set of users. We have the system admin, we have the chat free user, we have analytics cloud integration user, and the analytic cloud security users. Now I've logged in as a system administrator. So you can create new users or create multiple users or reset password for any of these users. So if I want to create a new user, I'll just click on new user. I'll enter the details and then click on save. Now it is the duty of system administrator to add new employees into a Salesforce organization. So these are the important fields, which means it cannot be empty. You can enter his first name, last name, his alias, email, username, nickname, and then select a role and the user license and its profile. Now let us go back. So when you click on a user, it will give you details about the user and what all permission they have. Now if you want, you can change your password from here or you can just go back or just select the user and click on reset password. So this is how you can add new users or reset password for any user. Now let us see how can we set password policies. For that, let us search for profiles. Select profiles. So just select the profile you want to set the password policy for. 
So I'll just click on contract manager over here. I've just selected a random profile. So let me just scroll down and you'll get password policies. Now you can see the default password policy set as user password expires in 90 days. In the password history, three passwords will be remembered. The minimum password length is eight characters. The complexity must include alphabet and numerical characters. The password question required, it cannot contain the password. The maximum invalid login attempts are 10 and the lockout effective period is 15 minutes. Now if I want, I can change this to anything I want. I can select when the user password expires in, what is the minimum password length, how many password would be remembered, the password complexity, the password question requirement, the maximum invalid login attempts and the lockout effective period. So this is how you can set password policies in the organization level security. So now let us see how can you limit login access to certain hours of a certain location. So again, scroll down. Right under password policies, you have login hours and login IP address. So if you want, just click on edit and you can decide from when to when you want this particular user to log in. Now, if you don't want the user to work on Saturdays and Sundays, you can make sure he cannot log in or you can make sure he can only log in during the office hours and after that he cannot. Next in login IP ranges, you can limit the IP addresses from which a user can log in. So this was about organization level security. So now let us move on to a next level of security, which is the object level security. Now, before we get into the next three types of security level, I want you to understand what exactly are objects, fields and records. Objects in Salesforce are like leads, contacts, opportunities or any other custom objects. Fields are basically the columns in the tables and records are the rows or entries in the table. So now coming to the object level security in Salesforce. Object level security or object permission helps control data access. Using object permission, you can prevent a user from seeing, creating, editing or deleting an instance of a particular object type, such as a lead or an opportunity. Object permission lets you hide whole tab and objects from a particular user so that they don't even know that a type of data exists. This does not always have to be about preventing the access. You can also give access to certain users to see and edit the objects. Now there are two ways of setting object permissions. One is profiles and the other one is permission sets. Let us talk about them one by one. First is profiles. Now profiles are a collection of settings and permission that determine what a user can do in the application, which means what data and features can be accessed by the user. So for example, a sales representative will have a sales profile. So he can only access the object that he will need to carry out his daily task. He won't have access to the data or object that a developer uses and the vice versa. So in object level security, you can assign only those objects that the user profile will use. So basically profile controls object that a user can see and what they can do on those objects. Like can they read it or even edit and delete it. So I guess you have some idea about profiles. Now let us see what are permission sets. Now a permission sets is a collection of settings and permission that gives user access to various tools and functions. Permission sets extends user functional access without changing a profile. So if a permission isn't enabled in a profile to access an object, but is enabled in a permission set, users with that profile and permission set can access the object. It's just like additional access to object. Let me give you an example so you can understand this better. Let's say you have several users who must delete and transfer the leads, but according to the profile, they cannot delete and transfer the leads. So you can create a permission set based on the task so that the user can perform the task of deleting and transferring the leads. So now let us switch to our Salesforce console to see how can you set profiles and permission sets. So again, just search for profile over here. So from here, just select the profile who you want to give access or deny object access. So I'll just select a random profile. Now you can just scroll down. So now when you scroll down, you will find standard object permission. Now as I'm logged in as a system admin, I can set what all tasks a user profile can do. So under standard object permission, you can set what all the user can access and what all object the user cannot access. So if you want to give the user only read access in account, I can just uncheck all this, create, edit and delete, then he won't be able to create, edit or delete an account object. So this is how you can grant object access to different Salesforce profiles. Now let us see how can you set permission sets. So for that, let me type permission sets. 
we click on it. Now if I want to create a new permission set, I just click on new over here. It'll ask me to label it. I'll just label it new user. And if you want you can add a license, else you can just click on save. Now here you'll find something called object settings. So from here you can set additional permission for a profile. So let's say I want to set a permission for account object. Click on edit. So you can give permission for the user profile to either read it or create, edit or delete it. So this is like an additional permission for a user profile. So I guess you have some idea about object level security. So now let us move on to a next level of security, which is the field level security. Field level security allows user to have access to an object while limiting their access to individual field in that object. Field level security or field permission controls whether user can see, edit and delete the values for a particular field of an object. They let you protect sensitive fields without having to hide the whole object from the users. Now field permission are also controlled in permission sets and profiles. Field permission control the visibility of fields in any part of the application, including related lists, list views, reports and search results. So in this level of security, to ensure a user cannot access a particular field, we use field permissions. And one more important point in field level security is that field level security can only restrict access. It cannot grant it. It is similar to object level security, but at a field level. Now let us switch back to a Salesforce account to see how can you set field level security. For field level security, you need to go to profiles. Select the profiles. Then select the user profile for whom you want to set the field level security. So just scroll down and you'll find field level security over here. So these are all the fields which are present in your Salesforce account. You can just click on the particular field you want to make the changes in and click on edit. Now if you do not want the particular user to see the annual revenue and you can just unclick it and the user won't even know that there is a field called annual revenue. So this is how you set field level security. So now let us move on to a last level of security, which is the record level security. Record level security allows particular user to view an object, but then restrict the individual object records they are allowed to see. So the user can see the object, they can see the fields, but some records will not be visible to them. For example, an interviewer can see and edit only his or own reviews. He cannot edit or see the reviews of other interviewers. Now record level security is often referred as Salesforce sharing model or simply record sharing. You can manage record level access in four ways. First is organization wide default. In Salesforce records have a field called owner ID that points to a real user. Owner of the records are usually people who have created a record and have full CRUD access to it. CRUD means create, read, update and delete. So if the user wants, he can make the object record private so that only he can view the record or he can make it public so that other users can also view them. So let me switch to my Salesforce account to show you organization wide sharing. So as I've mentioned, every record will have a field called as account owner. So let us go and see that. So we'll go to the sales console. Accounts, we'll just click on one account. And here you can see we have a field called as account owner, which is Aman Patra. Now this account owner is the person who has basically created the record and has complete access to it. Now if I want, I can keep this record private so only I can see the record or if I want, I can also make it public so that other users can see this record as well. So to change from public to private or from private to public, we need to go to sharing settings. So for that, we'll go to setup. We'll search for sharing settings. Here. So here we have organization wide defaults and here under object we can see account and contract and the default internal access is public rewrite and the default external access is private. So if you want to change it, we can just go to edit and for account and contract, we can just make it private. So only I will be able to view the record or you can make it public read only. So only the users can read it and not make any changes to this. And if I give public rewrite, which means the other users can even edit the record. So this was a demo for organization wide sharing. The next way is role hierarchy. This gives access for users higher in the hierarchy 
to all the records owned by the users below them in the hierarchy. For example, the sales representative can only view their record and not their colleagues record, but the managers can view all the sales representatives record. Now role hierarchy does not have to match your organization chart exactly. Instead, each role in a hierarchy should represent a level of data access that a user or a group of user needs. Now the question arises here is how can I share my records with my fellow employees? So this can be done by sharing rules. A user or admin can share records based on roles and subordinates and public group ownership. For example, a sales executive can share all the records owned by him with everyone in the service executive role if he wants to. Next, the fourth way of managing record level access is manual sharing. Manual sharing provides a mechanism to share individual records with others. This permission is accessed through sharing button on the record detail page and lets end users share individual records with each other. So this was about the different level of security in Salesforce. So now let us move on to the next topic and see some of the Salesforce security features. The first feature is auditing. Now Salesforce keeps a track of all the login attempts for the past six months. This includes the location of the login attempts and the IP addresses. Administrators can also turn on field history tracking, which gives them visibility into field value changes and the users who perform the changes. The next feature is two-factor authentication. Administrators can turn up company-wide two-factor authentication. So when a user tries to log in from a different system or a different IP address, he can be asked for verification and this verification could be something like an OTP sent to his phone or email address. Admins can also set login restriction based on the time of the day and the location from which login attempt originates. The next security feature is custom login flow. Now this is one of the innovative access control feature of Salesforce. It has the ability to create custom login flows. So let's say for example, if a user attempts to log in into Salesforce from a restricted IP or during restricted hours, admins can implement a flow that will still allow the users to access Salesforce, but only after they've gone through several steps of authentication beyond the two-factor authentication. In this way, an organization can meet the security requirement while also being able to perform business critical activities within Salesforce. Now moving on to a fourth security feature in Salesforce, it is encryption. Salesforce provides what is known as classic encryption. Admins can encrypt custom fields with 128-bit advanced encryption standard using this feature, which comes out of the box. But there are several limitations to this, including the fact that it only applies to custom text fields that can't be more than 175 character long. So these were some of the prominent Salesforce security features. Now moving on to a final topic for today, which is what are Salesforce security's best practices? The first one is to turn on IP restriction for users login to minimize the risk of unauthorized access in case of compromised accounts. Second is making organization-wide sharing rule as restrictive as possible while allowing normal business function and using role hierarchy, sharing rules, permission set, etc. to extend access beyond the organization-wide sharing rule. Third is to require secure password that combines uppercase letter, lowercase letters, numbers and symbols and require a minimum of eight characters. Next, you need to set the maximum incorrect login attempts to between three and five times. Fifth, you need to ensure that the user re-login upon session timeout, but enable session timeout warning pop-ups. Next, if you're using platform encryption, regularly generate a new tenant secret, which will generate a new encryption key. And when destroying the encryption keys, make sure all data encrypted with that key is decrypted first. So these were some of the Salesforce security's best practices. And with this, we have come to the end of the session. I hope it was helpful. Do leave your valuable thoughts in the comment section below. Happy learning.